is what we heard from, from the acting secretary about child separation specifically. These prosecutions, as all criminal prosecutions do, resulted in temporary separations of parents and children. This practice lasted six weeks, ended 13 months ago. All right. My understanding is, Chris, that you've, you've actually worked through your organization on the family reunification process, and you contend that family separation is, in fact, still happening. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So we were one of the two agencies approached by the government to help them reunify families as this crisis broke out last summer. And I can tell you, though the policy has ended, the practice continues. So since June 2018, since the end of the zero tolerance policy, we've had nearly 40 cases. Um, I've had four babies under the age of one separated, and we're one of many agencies. And so the estimate we have right now is that there's been um, about 700 children that have been separated um, in recent months. How, well, how do you square that with what we heard from the secretary there? Is he, is he unaware of that? Yeah, I mean, and, and honestly, I'm not sure what data he's looking at because, you know, we flagged this concern in 2017 um, to our agency contacts, and we continue to report about these cases each time they come about. Um, the reality that even 30 children from the zero tolerance policy have not been reunified with their families a year later these are all facts that we've conveyed to the government, so I'm not sure what he's kind of reporting on right now, but it's not the data, it's not the, the facts, the statistics, the anecdotes that I can share with you. We had an eight-month-old separated from a parent on Christmas Eve. Um, this is not unusual. Well, while we're having this conversation, this is a, uh, a live look inside uh, the Capitol Rotunda. Uh, protesters there, as you can see, have assembled. Um, these are protesters, we're told, who are there uh, petitioning uh, the government to do something about the conditions inside these migrant detention facilities. It would also seem as if uh, they are being arrested there inside the Rotunda, uh, several of them on the floor right now. Again, a, a live look here. Chris, as I also understand that your group has been providing services to those seeking asylum and that you've toured some of the facilities like the one in Homestead, Florida. Um, what, what did you see there and how, how did what you see, how did that square with what we've heard uh, from Secretary McLean's, uh, McLean's claim that the conditions have improved? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you that it's just not a reflection of reality. Um, visiting Homestead, uh, having visited um, through my staff uh, Carrizo Springs, which just opened up last week, what we are still seeing is a crisis. Um, I walked into Homestead. At the time I visited, it was about 1,700 children. It was intended to expand to 2,350 and then 3,200 children. When you're warehousing children in those conditions, it's not surprising that we have six children who have died. Um, obviously, some of the pictures uh, that you're seeing now are of those children. Um, I met with a mother last week, uh, Ms. Juarez, whose daughter um, died in these horrific conditions. Um, the daughter and the mother were placed in what ICE calls an ice box uh, for three weeks. She pleaded with doctors to give her daughter the care that she needed. They just wrote it off as an ear infection, and she died um, of a viral infection. And the conditions that these children are being placed in are horrific. And our point is, look, there are alternatives. Um, we provide uh, transitional foster care. We provide um, group homes where uh, they're better for the children. They're better for taxpayers because they're only a third of the cost. When you look at Homestead, what we're paying private prison companies and for-profit companies is $775 per child per day to keep them. And when you realize that there's four, these for-profit companies have turned to immigration as their new profit centers since criminal justice reform has moved them more out of the American penitentiary system, of course you're going to see the sexual abuses that have report, been reported in the last several months as well as the tragic deaths. Chris, thank you. Uh, and again, as we've been having this conversation, uh, a live look inside the Capitol Rotunda um, as these uh, peaceful protesters are um, being arrested. Uh, and these are folks that, that we're, we're told are there protesting the conditions inside these migrant detention facilities. We've probably seen about a dozen folks arrested so far. Um, several of the folks being arrested um, appear uh, to, to be older. Um, but again, leaving the rotunda uh, right now as we speak. Protests happening there. Also massive protests